So let's suppose we get into a car and we drive 200 kilometers from some initial point to some final point and that takes us 200 kilometers away from our initial point. Let's suppose the time it takes us to drive that period is two hours. Now, what is our average velocity? Well, average velocity is simply displacement divided by time elapsed. And since our displacement is 200 and our time is two hours, our average velocity is 100 kilometers per hour. That means that on average we were moving at this velocity, at this speed. Now, what if I told you that at some given moment, let's say at this moment, I stopped to get some coffee. That means if I stopped, my actual velocity at that point was zero. So that means that velocity and my average velocity are not the same thing. Now, in fact, instantaneous velocity is the velocity at some specific point. So if I want to find what my velocity at that specific point is, I have to find what my instantaneous velocity is. Now, sometimes instantaneous velocity is the same thing as average velocity, but that's not always the case, as we'll see in just a moment. The formula for our instantaneous velocity is given by the following equation. Now, notice that average velocity has a V with a bar on top, while instantaneous velocity, or simply velocity, has no bar. This bar means average. So, instantaneous velocity or velocity is equal to the ratio of our change in x, our displacement, divided by change in t, our time, of the limit as our change in t approaches zero. In other words, what this tells us is, as we take our integral to be smaller and smaller and smaller, as it approaches zero, the top, our change in displacement, also becomes smaller and, and smaller and smaller. It eventually also approaches zero. And eventually, it will approach, this ratio will approach some number. And this number, numerical number, is our velocity or instantaneous velocity. Now, in calculus, we can represent this in the following notation. So if we take the derivative of our displacement function with respect to our time, so d of x, d of t, that will also give us our instantaneous velocity. So d of x is simply our infinitely small change in displacement, and our dt is infinitely small change in time. So let's look at these two graphs. So this is an example of when average velocity is equal to average or instantaneous velocity. And this is an example where instantaneous velocity is not equal to average velocity. So, let's suppose we have the y-axis is our velocity and the x-axis is our time. Notice that in this time interval, our velocity was constant. It was the same exact velocity. So that means our instantaneous velocity, our velocity at any given moment, was the same exact thing as our average velocity. So these two velocities are equal, but let's suppose instead, when I was driving, my velocity varied. And that means although on average my velocity might be somewhere here, at any given point my velocity might be different from my average velocity. Although at this point and this point, my velocity and average velocity are exactly the same. But most of the points, that instantaneous velocity and velocity have different values. So, let's go to this graph here. Let's suppose that our y-axis is our position, our x-axis is our time. So, let's suppose this is our function, our displacement uh, function. Now, let's suppose that we choose two points. This point here, which is our initial point, so our t-initial and x-initial position, and let's suppose this is our final point, our t final and our x final. I want to find what the average velocity is between these two points. So let's use our formula. So average velocity is equal to our change in our x over change in our t. And notice what this is. This is simply the slope of the line 
that passes through these two points. So that means my average velocity between these two points is simply the slope of the line that passes between these two points. Now, what happens if we fix this point TI and our TF begins to approach our TI? In other words, what happens is, is our change in T becomes smaller and smaller. Well, let's try that. Let's fix our TI and let's begin and let's take our TF and let's approach it to TI. What happens then? Well, notice that as we get closer and closer, what happens to our slope? Well, our slope changes, but how does it change? It changes in such a way that eventually when we get to this point, when these two points are equal, my slope will be the slope of the line tangent to this point, to my point TI, XI. So, once again, notice that as the time interval gets smaller, as our change in time approaches zero, or as our TF approaches TI, the slope of the line connecting the two points, these two points, becomes closer and closer to the line tangent at that point. In fact, our instantaneous velocity is the slope of the line tangent at that point, to that point. So, once again, STF approaches TI, XF approaches XI, eventually the slope at this point tangent to that point will be our instantaneous velocity. So let's look at this example. We have our x-axis and the y-axis, so our position and our time. Notice that this is our function and we want to find what the instantaneous velocity is at this point. So our point T, x. To find my instantaneous velocity, I have to draw a line tangent to this point. So I draw my line. This is my tangent line to the point t, comma, x. And notice that this tangent line has a slope of zero. So that means my slope, which is the same thing as saying my derivative of this function at this point is equal to zero.